grace and peace to you, and welcome to the First Presbyterian Church of Naples, where we say and believe that we're in the heart of Naples with the love of God. We worship, we love, we grow, we serve. We welcome all, and that means you here in our pews, as well as all of you joining us online today, wherever you may be. I'm Rex Childs. I'm the associate pastor here at the church. And the rest of our worship team today includes Reverend Craig Goodrich, Senior Pastor, Dr. Bryce Gerlock, our Director of Music at the Organ Bench. Uh, our liturgist today is Amy Manley, our uh, Deacon Co-Moderator. Thank you, Amy. And upstairs on the cameras, we have David Fister and Taylor Irvin. Thank you. There are uh, a number of announcements in your bulletin. I hope you'll take a look at those. I'll highlight just a few. You'll, of course, notice We've handed out all of these wonderful palms for Palm Sunday. Hopefully uh, you received one on the way in. If not, I'm sure an usher would be happy uh, to bring you one. We will wave these during the opening hymn as the choir makes their entrance, and then at our closing hymn as well. Um, you do see these bags up front on either side of the chancel. Those are our Easter remembrance bags, primarily for uh, shut-ins, uh, members of our congregation who are not able to worship in person with us. If you feel so inclined, uh, please come up and grab a bag or two to deliver to them. Uh, they're organized by zip code, so try and find your uh, zip code so that you can deliver those this week. Uh, there is a blood drive coming up this week. You can sign up for that in our narthex after the service. Uh, please note that blood drive is on Tuesday this week. Typically, we have them on Mondays, but we had to make a slight uh, scheduling change, so please note the blood drive is Tuesday. Um, you'll also see in your pews there are giving envelopes for the one great hour of sharing and offering uh, that Presbyterian churches do around the country during this time of year. So you can read a bit more about that in your bulletin. We hope you'll participate in the one great hour of sharing. Uh, of course, Palm Sunday begins uh, Holy Week, and so wanted to let you know about our Holy Week services. You'll see that on the back of your bulletin. Uh, we have a Maundy Thursday service right here at 7 o'clock on Thursday this week. We'll be back at noon on Friday for the Good Friday service. And then please note, next Sunday we have different worship times. We'll have our 7.30 sunrise service out in the courtyard. And then here in the sanctuary we'll have two services at 8.30 and 10.15. For all of those who come to my Sunday school class, we're going to take next Sunday off. So please note that no Sunday school class for Easter next week week. I believe that's all the announcements that I have this morning, so now it's our custom to stand and to greet one another, passing the peace of Christ. So the peace of Christ be with you. Before we pass the peace to those worshiping online, please do find the friendship pads in your pew at some point in the service, hopefully not during the sermon, um, but please do find those and fill out the information there. All right, let's look towards the front camera. You ready? The peace of Christ be with you. And now let's join together in our call to worship. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is he. Let us worship God. Our opening hymn is all glory, laud, and honor.
give those arms a rest <laughs> and center our hearts. Friends, we pour water into the baptismal font each Sunday because it reminds us of our baptism in which and through which we are cleansed of our sins. And the good news is that God's grace precedes even our repentance, like the father who runs to welcome the prodigal home. So in that assurance, let us now pray together our prayer of confession. Triumphant God, we join the crowds of the ages in shouting your praises. While our lips give you glory, our lives seldom reflect your purposes. We sing easily of your greatness, but living faithfully is often beyond us. We hear of your salvation, yet sin is close and brief. Daily leading us away from you. Have mercy on us. Ride into our hearts with healing grace. Forgive what we have done. Direct who we shall be. Hosanna, Lord, save us. Hear the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven, receive God's forgiveness, and be at peace. Thanks be to God. So much and um, maybe grab your palm branches and then come back up for the children's time.
<laughs> We're not going to Kids Lab just yet, Miss Nancy. <laughs> come on back up. And any other of God's children, young or old, who want to come up on the chancel steps, you're certainly welcome to join us. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, Nick, how are you? Hello, Vivian. Good morning. Good morning. Well, thank you very much to our children's choir. You all sounded great. That was really, really wonderful. So thank you very much. I think that all uplifted all of our spirits. So thank you. We are glad you're here this morning on this very special Sunday, Palm Sunday, like we already talked about. Uh, I know some of you have your palms down on the pews. Um, and the reason we have these palms is because of our Bible story today. Our Bible story is about Jesus going into a city called Jerusalem, and the people were so excited that Jesus was there. Would you be excited if Jesus showed up here this morning? Yeah, yeah I think we all would be pretty excited if Jesus showed up this morning. And so the people, when Jesus came into Jerusalem, they were so excited, they took branches, they took their coats, they waved them around, they put them on the ground in front of Jesus so that dirt didn't come up from the, the road, and they shouted praises at Jesus. They said, Hosanna, just like you guys just sang. So thank you very, very much. Um, and after the service, I hope all, all of our, all of God's children, young and old, are invited up to the youth room because we are gonna do a special project with these palms. We are gonna make crosses out of these palms. And you're probably wondering how in the world are you gonna do that? Because that's what I'm wondering. So I'm looking forward <laughs> to finding that out, Miss Nancy. So I hope you'll all join us and I hope you in the congregation will join us as well. So before we pray, I always like to remind you and all of the folks out there in the pews and all of you joining us online, that you have made this day a special day, just by your being you. There's no one in the whole world like you, and I like you just the way you are, and God does too. All right, so let's put our hands together and bow our heads, and I'll offer a prayer for us. Dear God, help us to welcome Jesus as the people did so long ago palm branches, and with our shouts of Hosanna. We pray this in his precious name. Amen. Amen. All right, thank you guys. Now you can head to kids' lab. Come now to a special time in the life of our congregation, which is receiving new members, and we'll call on our clerk, uh, Sarah Lee Oldham, to introduce them. On behalf of the session, I present as full members Mary D. Dreyer, Richard Dreyer whom we receive as members of our congregation. Mary D. and Richard, God has brought you to us in God's providence, just as God has brought each of us here today. And the session has met this morning and unanimously voted to accept you into membership. Always unanimous. And here is why we're here. Through baptism, we enter the covenant God has established. And in that covenant, God gives us new life. We're nurtured by the love of God and God's people. As we embrace that covenant, we choose whom we will serve and we turn to Jesus Christ. So now as you publicly declare your faith, we ask you to reject sin, to profess your faith in Jesus Christ and confess the faith of the church because you are the light of the world, said Jesus. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under a bushel basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house, and in the same way, 
Let your light so shine before others so they may see your good works and give glory to God. So now as you declare your faith, we ask you to reject sin and these questions now. Trusting in God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world, do you? Do you turn to Jesus Christ, accept him as your Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and love, do you? And will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love, will you? And will you be a faithful member of this congregation, sharing in our worship and ministry through your prayers and gifts, your study and service, and so fulfill your calling to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, Will you? Would the congregation please stand? Do you, as members of the Church of Jesus Christ, promise to guide and nurture these members by word and deed, with love and prayer? encouraging them to follow and know Christ and to be faithful members of Christ's church. We do. So let us welcome them using the liturgy printed in your bulletin. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you to share with us in the ministry of Christ, for we are all one in Christ. And let us pray. Almost oh, gracious and loving God, we thank you that you have brought these two people to this congregation. Empower us, strengthen us to support each other and encourage each other as we build up the body of Christ here in the heart of Naples. We pray this in your son's name. Amen. Please join me in the prayer for illumination. Eternal God, whose word silences the shouts of the mighty, quiet within us every voice but your own. Speak to us through the suffering and death of Jesus Christ, that by the power of your Holy Spirit we may receive grace to show Christ's love lives on, given to your service. Amen. Our first reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Mark. Hear now what the Spirit is saying to the church. When we were approaching Jerusalem at Bethpage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent for two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say, the Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Well, before we get to the second scripture reading, uh, we did want to recognize our choir. And that's because one of the common refrains we hear here at First Pres is how wonderful the music program is. And a big part of that equation is our choir who lead us in the hymns. They offer uh, beautiful, special offerings of music to us like the response we just heard. Um, so today, again, we wanted to take a moment to recognize our choir. You will see in your bulletin that all of their names are printed by section, so I hope you'll take note of that at a point during the service. But uh, the choir, would you please stand one more time so we could thank you. Thank you for all that you do for us and all that you do to the glory of God. And now Craig will offer a, and a prayer. prayer. We thank you, O oh God, for the gift of music that lifts our hearts and souls. We were made to praise you, and we thank those in the blue robes who week after week lead us in song to draw us closer to you and to each other. Bless these gifted ones, stir their hearts, lift their voices as they lift our souls. To you be the glory and praise, in Jesus' name, amen. Our second scripture reading today is also from the Gospel of Mark. You'll notice it's quite lengthy, so uh, just get comfortable and follow along in your bulletin. It's from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 15. Hear now God's word for you and for all of us today. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha! You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, the younger, and of Joseph and Salome. These used to follow him and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. 
When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph bought a linen cloth, and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth, and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where the body was laid. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you for this witness from Mark's gospel, which we have just read, and for your Son, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock, our strength, our hope, our love, and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, it's a rather exciting time of the year. A lot is happening, particularly this week. It's a time of great joy and celebration, but it's also a time of heartbreak and sadness. Between today, Thursday, and Friday, it's a real roller coaster of emotions, for sure. And of course, I'm talking about March Madness, right? <laughs> I know, I know, you thought I was talking about Holy Week, and we'll get there, I promise. But it has been quite a journey already, with lots more to come for both the men's and women's basketball tournaments. I've been enjoying watching the games, I hope you all have as well. And of course, there have been a number of upsets, like there are every year. Most, I think, of the 11 seeds beat the 6 seeds. That was pretty interesting. But sadly, my Florida Gators lost on a last-second shot in the first round. Uh, but I do know Craig is very excited that the Tar Heels are in the Sweet 16. <laughs> we'll see if they can go all the way, Craig. We'll see. But getting to the reason we're here today, this is the beginning of Holy Week, the biggest week in the liturgical year, the biggest week in the church calendar. As I mentioned in the announcements, we will have a Maundy Thursday service, 7 p.m. We'll be back for Good Friday at noon, and we'll have those three services on Easter Sunday, sunrise at 7.30 in the courtyard, just a brief service. Then two services here in the sanctuary, 8.30 and 10.15. We hope we'll see you for each of those days, or as many as you can come to. But today, again, today is Palm Sunday, or to be a bit more precise, it's actually Palm Passion Sunday. But that doesn't quite roll off the tongue the same, does it? As we saw in our scripture readings, today has kind of a dual focus, the palms and the Passion. And while it seems a bit odd, this has actually been the case since the 4th century. And so we rely on the church's tradition, the wisdom of that tradition, which rightly emphasizes that the approach to Jerusalem, this coming into Jerusalem, has the cross as its final destination. So we begin with loud celebrations welcoming Jesus into Jerusalem. But we end with the crucifixion and the silence of the tomb. 
Well, one commentator I read this week simply said that the palm procession is a revolutionary act. It's a revolutionary act, rather strong terms. But that was true for the people in Jesus' time, and I think it's true for us today as well. You know, for us today, it's really the only Sunday of the year where we hand out really any kind of prop, right? We wave them around. Most Sundays, we're really only accustomed to using our ears and our minds. But today, this special day, we engage more of our senses. We stand and move our bodies. We wave our arms around. And as Craig mentioned, mine was getting pretty tired. I don't know about you. But we also get this beautiful image, this beautiful vision of the palm branches swaying back and forth. I saw a few of you kind of up in the front turning around to see that view. And if you didn't at the first hymn, I hope you will at the last hymn, because it's a beautiful picture all these palms waving together as we sing. We can see and imagine what it must have been like to be part of the crowd as Jesus rode by, that kind of impromptu parade as Jesus enters the city. But for Jesus and the disciples, it's, it seems to be at least a rather curious event. Jesus comes into the city, but he really doesn't do anything. He doesn't speak to anyone. He doesn't address the crowd that has been shouting praises of Hosanna at him. He goes to the temple, and he just kind of looks around. Somebody in our Sunday school class said he did a recon mission of the temple, right? Seeing what's going on there, seeing what he can expect. But he goes in, he takes a look, and it's late in the day, and so he leaves. He goes back to Bethany for the night. So what's, what's the big deal? Why do we celebrate Palm Sunday? Well, there's really, there's a lot of symbolism going on in our passage, at least the first passage in particular. We get a lot of details about the cult, right, and how it was procured by two of Jesus' disciples. So that's something we should really be paying attention to. In Matthew's version of the story, and this story appears in all four Gospels, actually, but in Matthew's version of the story, it's explicitly mentioned, but in Mark, it's only alluded to that there is a prophecy in Zechariah 9. And this prophecy is that the long-awaited messianic king would enter Jerusalem riding on a humble steed, on a colt. We also should know that pilgrims traveling to Jerusalem for the Passover were expected to walk into the city. So Jesus, by riding on the colt, is making a statement. He's separating himself from every other pilgrim traveling to Jerusalem for the Passover. He's making a statement about his royal authority. Also, not included in our text, but important historical context, is that Roman leaders, the Roman oppressors of God's people, they would often have triumphal processions into the city in celebration of military victories, including Emperor Vespasian's defeat of the Jews. So the Romans, they used these parades into the city as an opportunity to show their strength and their might. Jesus' entry into the city then is quite subversive of their Roman overlords. The Romans ruled through fear and violence, but the kingdom Jesus is inaugurating will be one of peace and of justice. And of course, the other rather interesting thing, right, is Jesus doesn't really have a victory to celebrate, at least not yet. His celebration is premature then in that sense. But it's necessary, of course, for Jesus' victory comes through his suffering and his death. 
And in the same way that Jesus foreknew how to procure the cult, Jesus' victory has not yet come to pass, but he knows it is assured. He knows his victory is assured. And that, of course, brings us to his passion. And while it's long been part of the church's tradition to have the palms and the passion together, it also has a rather practical purpose as well. I'm a realist. I understand that many of you simply aren't able to come to our midweek services. But if we move from the celebratory hosannas of this morning to the shouts of hallelujah on Easter morning, we've missed a very important step in between, right? After all, there can be no resurrection from the dead without, well, death, right? The death has to happen before Jesus can be raised from the dead. And so we need to spend time contemplating and meditating on Jesus' suffering and death. Only then can we truly understand the shocking, miraculous nature of his resurrection. The joy of Easter morning is more fully felt, more deeply understood when we have counted its cost, including the passion alongside the palms, allows us a full week instead of just a few days for it all to sink in. On Good Friday, we, we will read the passion story from Luke's perspective. This morning, we read a portion of Mark's, of course. And interestingly, about a third of Mark's gospel is dedicated to Jesus's passion. That should give you an idea of the importance of the passion from Mark's point of view. Many of the details are familiar to us, of course. We read how Simon of Cyrene was pressed into service, carrying Jesus' cross. Jesus, who was welcomed into the city as a king just a few days earlier, now has that title used to mock him. We also hear Jesus crying out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The women... They faithfully look on from a distance. And finally, Joseph of Arimathea, he secures Jesus' body and places it in the tomb. So what then are we to make of the palms and the passion? What do these texts mean for us today? Well, I have two quick thoughts. First, as Christians, we are called to follow Jesus, not just in the good times, but also the bad as well. We are called to follow not just when it is easy, but also when it is hard. It would have been a breeze to follow Jesus during the acclamation of the palms, right? The procession into Jerusalem and the hosannas. In fact, it would have been everything the disciples had hoped for, the realization of a long-awaited dream. Yet our plans, sometimes, maybe often, are not God's plans. And when things go south, the disciples flee. Peter denies him, yet the women remain faithful, staying close to Jesus even until the end. And finally, while the passion is hard for us to read, it can also assure us that Jesus empathizes with us in our own sufferings. Jesus knows what it meant to feel pain, to feel abandoned by his friends, and at least even for just a moment, what it felt like to be abandoned by God. When we experience times of distress, we can be confident that we are not alone. That Jesus is present with us, not just in the good times, but also the hard, tough times as well.
just as we are called to be with him in the good and the bad as well. May it be so. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us now stand, those who are able, as we join in together, saying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Friends, as we join in prayer, I invite you to turn a page to find our prayer list, and you will see folks' names listed there. Just take a moment in silence to read over those names, please. And let us pray. Lord, on this day we have gathered to hear your word, to give you praise, to fellowship together, to care and to pray. And on this Palm Sunday we welcome you and ask that you would ride into our hearts with your healing grace. So now we let go of our own desire for power and control. We let go of our desire for approval and esteem. We let go of our desire for security and safety. We let go of our desire to change any situation, condition, person, even ourselves. But we don't stop there. We open to your love and presence and God's action within us. We open to the power and the energy and flow of Holy Spirit. And we will do and say and go as you lead us. And so now we make our prayer of intercession. We pray for this world that you love, that you would protect innocent lives this world over, that you would restrain evil and violence and oppression. We pray for the governments of the world so different and for rulers and legislatures and cabinets and presidents and courts. We pray that justice would be done and charity would be exercised. We pray today for all who are grieving that you would bring meaning and purpose and care and comfort and strength into their lives, comfort them by grateful memories and the hope of resurrection. There are many that are ill, many on our own prayer list, Lord. You know what they need. We pray for them to give, for you to give to them today what they need, maybe just a moment of quiet or peace, but healing in your way and time. We pray, for, we pray for caregivers, grateful for the medical community. Continue to give them strength and discernment to be alongside them in their caring and discerning and in their treatment. And finally, O oh Lord, we pray for your church. Give us the courage to proclaim and serve our Lord Jesus Christ in all we say and do. To your glory for the salvation of humankind, for the hope and healing and peace and reconciliation of the world. 
And now we pray the prayer taught to us by the one we follow, Jesus Christ our Savior, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If the friendship pad has not been passed, this would be a good time to do that. All that we have, our very life and breath, is a gift from God. It's all grace. Our response is gratitude. So now we will receive our morning offering with open hearts and hands, as well as the gift of music, the offering of our choir.
but thine own. We ask your blessing upon these gifts, those given online, those given in the mail, those given for the one great hour of sharing, that you would multiply them to be used for the ministry of Jesus Christ in and through this place, in and through us. And this we pray with expectation and thanksgiving in Jesus' name, amen. Our hymn of commitment is Hosanna, loud Hosanna. Spencer Hall for a time of fellowship and refreshment, and don't forget up in the youth room, turning these beautiful palms into crosses. Um, but now let us go to love and serve the Lord. The palms and the passion, let us shout our hosannas, Lord save us, as we contemplate the cost of God's saving grace. So now let us go knowing that the love of God is with you, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is with you, and the power and presence of the Holy Spirit is with you this day and every day to come. Amen. Amen.